to talk about five things that can boost your confidence. The first one is getting rid of negative people and negative things. Negative people often are focused on themselves anyway, so you're not going to lose anything by getting rid of them. It's a bit like when you talk to somebody about how are you, and then they give you their entire medical history, but they do it every time you see them. Well, there is no positive in that. And I know with relatives, you may end up roped into that because they're old or whatever. But bear in mind that those environments, if it is with a relative, an aging relative, you're not with them 24-7. And this is one of the things I do want to stress. But at the same time, if you're with a friend that constantly does the same and is always focused on themselves, then they're not really a friend. You're a counselor for them. They're focused on themselves 110 um, percent and you do find that with some people that will focus everything back to themselves you know like that where you ask them how they are they don't bother asking you how you are because they, they they want to chat for 20 minutes about themselves um in the same way if you're in a work environment where you're constantly being put down by a boss or whatever and it's of no fault of your own it's not personal development it's not focused on improvement but simply they just don't like you um, you're probably better off in a different environment. Simple as that. You're better off finding another job elsewhere which has a much more positive environment. You've got to understand that you need to value yourself and part of that is valuing how people treat you as well. Um, I'll get on to the next question relating to helping other people which also ties into this. But bear in mind that when I talk about getting rid of negative people it may involve you changing your jobs, getting rid of some people that have been friends for ages but they're not really friends um, or at least discussing with them and saying look I'm not being funny but you're always talking about yourself what, are, what about changing you know if you can't do that then it's time to get rid of all of this stuff the, the next one is relating to uh, come, helping somebody else helping somebody else is important and the reason this happens is, firstly, you feel better for doing it, but also the other person appreciates it. Often, you do not get that in many environments these days. Everything's about the Roseanne Barr sort of put everybody down constantly um, environment. So actually helping somebody out, doesn't matter what it is, can have a boost to you and to them. Um, and sometimes it's very, very simple stuff. I remember one of the guys I was working with, um, he, his wife, they thought she had cancer. So this is on the, she had something happen on the Friday. So he's had to rush home early on the Friday because she's in the hospital and he's having to deal with it. And at the same time, the directors within the company um, are asking, well, when's he going to be back at work? Well, my response is very simple. It doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, I'll deal with whatever comes in. I don't mind doing the extra hours to cover it and making sure it works. In the same way, I phoned the guy up and simply said, you know what, take your time, hope your wife's okay, everything going well, da-da-da. Don't worry about work, I'll deal with it. Now, that was actually conflicting with what the business actually demanded. Uh, but the whole point is the business only cared, well, the directors only cared, about the functionality of the company. As long as the company was functioning, they, they didn't really care about the guy whatsoever. Um, now, they, that goes against their policies, but that's the way some of this actually is in the real world. But myself, I recognize, you know what, I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. I mean, I'm in a scenario where if I was in the same shoes, I would, would want somebody to cover for me and take over the responsibilities and make sure things function. Um, because... At the end of the day, you've got something that's pretty serious. And as such, you take that over. You say, I'll deal with that. You focus on your wife. You focus on what you need to be doing now. Company side, I'll deal with all of it. And there is nothing wrong with doing that. Taking that load is good for you. It's good for you in the sense of personal well-being, in the sense that um, you've done something good and you feel good about doing it. You've done something good that also may actually develop your career because, quite simply, you've been able to take on more load. Um, but ultimately, you've actually helped out somebody in need, which is the, the most important bit. 
that person will not only never forget that, but also, I mean, I know when I talk to the guy now, you know, I left the company a few years ago, um, he will still bring up the fact that I was the only person. Well, sorry, that's unfair. There's another engineering manager that also called him, which is funny enough, one of my other friends. Um, but generally within the business, nobody bothers making an effort. They just like, well, this one has fell by the wayside. We'll wait till he comes back. So that's, that's the first two. One is to compliment others. Complimenting others is very, very important because it has a double, double uh, whammy. First thing is that I know myself dealing with a lot of people I was working with, it was rare. Sarcasm was very, very strong, but actually turn around and say you did a good job or whatever, even come up at an engineering forum where they were saying, well, not being funny, they come, the guys just save 50,000 pounds a month on the business expenses of, you know, operational expenses on something. And we give them a fake, fake pen and a certificate. Now, the first thing with those things are, is they're actually telling people to go and find somebody to give them a pen and certificate because they have to give out so many a month because um, they fill up the company magazine and stuff with them. So it becomes pointless and worthless. It's devalued. Um, but ultimately, if, if somebody's saving £50,000 a month, then maybe they're worth more than a cheap pen. Because it's, it's a fake one. You know, it's not even a Parker pen or something. It pretends to be something else. Um, I'm not going to, into the brands, but it's a, it's a rip-off of a branded, from a branded pen. Um, but the point being is, they would appreciate the compliment more because the certificate and the pen is from the corporate. You actually going up there and saying, I really appreciate this, this has saved us so much money, we've got more budget for this, that and the other, or whatever. They would appreciate that more because you've done it personally, you valued them, you made them feel better. On top of that, it's not just about business. If somebody's got a new suit or something, and you say, wow, you look really good in that suit, that, you know, it looks looks good on you or whatever. People appreciate that because at the end of the day, a lot of people get dressed up in the first place to be noticed. And if you actually make the effort and say, "I noticed you. You look good. You look confident, or whatever," um, they appreciate that. And at the same time, they remember it. And you will find that it projects a positive image as well because from your point of view, people are seeing you as somebody that is human. There's somebody that actually turns around and says, I look good, I look nice. And you're not the, the guy that's a complete whatever because you, you never speak to them or whatever. But you, it's, it's just part and parcel of a change. And it, the thing with this is it's important you create these changes because it's not a case of, well, I've never done that before, I shouldn't do it. It's more a point of you should be trying to... Um, Make this part of personal development to push yourself forward. There is nothing wrong with going into the office and start saying, oh, you've done something nice for your hair then, uh, since Friday or whatever. Or, hey, that new pair of shoes. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. I, you know, I like your new shoes. I like this or whatever. Redesigned the, the paperwork, whatever. You know, if something fits, there is nothing wrong with complimenting somebody. The same in a social environment. Same. I mean, I know I'm very business focused. That's just the way I am. But even from a social environment, just going up and saying, you did a good job there. You look nice. You look whatever. There's nothing wrong with it. It has an instant projection of how you are. Of you are a guy or girl that has the ability to project themselves as somebody that appreciates things. That is a happy-go-lucky type guy. That somebody that is confident, and it makes other people confident too, which is what you're looking for. Is everybody having that ability to say, you know, ah, oh, yeah, this is a positive environment? Is develop things in your brain. Um, one of the things that we do find, and I do bring this up now and again or regularly, is the the couch potato rise. When we get home from work, we're often not in the mood to do stuff. And I've got to admit, I see myself do it sometimes. When I am trying to figure out the next move forward, I'll often pause, work out where I'm going, then do some other stuff for a couple of days, then move in 
to the right direction. Everybody has this thing. There is nothing wrong with it in limited amounts. Having the day off where you just come in and just think, I'm going to sit and watch TV all day, now and again, is fine. But when you get into a routine of doing it on a daily basis, that's when you've got a problem. You need to change that. And part of that is recognizing that you should read a book 30 minutes a day. Now, whether you're reading it or absorbing it as an audio book, it doesn't really matter. One of the things I was doing with learning Spanish, for example, is the train when I was going to Birmingham uh, University was around 30 to 45 minutes. So it gave me around 20 minutes going and 20 minutes back. Basically, by the time you like got squeezed in like a sardine and actually had enough space to switch on your audio on your phone. Um, but that's basically what I used to do. Is I used to sit and listen to the audio book while I'm stuck on the train like a sardine. Um, there is time throughout the day, whether you're driving and you've got it on on your um, radio or whether it's a case of, when I say radio, I'm not talking about literally the radio. I'm talking about your in-car entertainment system. Um, but the, the point being, you need to make time for development. And some of it is like things like that. Some of it could be like puzzles. Some of it's self-development. Some of it's uh, studying a cookery course. It doesn't matter. This is personal development based on what you want to learn. Um, so I can't dictate to you what you should be learning. The point is, you're that person that knows exactly what you want. And if you don't know what you want, get some bite-sized stuff and just get snippets of different things until you find something you like. Because it, it's not always about an outcome being that um, it's going to be in your social life or your work life. It sometimes is just for fun. Sometimes it is just for um, the ability to do something new. So the important bit here is to keep the brain active in doing something positive, even if there is no uh, monetary value or social value to it, because that's part of life. You know, at the end of the day, maybe you want to learn to cook more, and that's for your own benefit. There's nothing wrong with that. The whole point is, you're trying to progress on a daily basis, so at least 30 minutes a day. And I think 30 minutes is realistic because what you'll have, you'll have some days you'll do an hour and another day you forgot about it. So if you work out in half an hour a day, it's, it's achievable. Something good for your body. Now this is an important one because I do think the rise of the fast food has left us in a bit of limbo relating to what is good and what's bad, and then we get conflicting information thanks to the power of the lobbyists. Um, fitness is something we all should be doing regularly. Um, now, a lot of the time, you should be trying to do this every single day. Uh, if you're at work, going for a walk for half an hour, even if it's in the office, up and down the stairs, at your lunch break, um, taking the stairs instead of the lift, doing these little bits that actually encourage you to be more healthy is good. Another thing is like things like smoothies. I have smoothies on a daily basis. Um, April, April does them for me. But the, the point being is I have a lot of um, in green ingredients that I absorb every day it's from a health point of view. Now, I do recognize that I still need to lose weight myself. This is part and parcel of... Uh, my metabolism slowing down, but also sitting behind the desk too much. But at the same time, I recognize it. And once I get the, the things coming up out of the way, the gym will start. And there is something coming up that, that you'll understand why I'm not in a rush to do the gym within the next six weeks. But after that, there'll be a pattern of the gym one hour every single day. I recognize these things um, are important, but I also recognize that with my own way of thinking, if the, it gets interrupted when I start the gym, I will then not follow through till the next, next quarter. But if I do it the right way around, which is the stuff I'm doing now, and I'm, not, I'm trying not to say what I'm doing, but the, you'll see then as soon as I get out the other end of this um, next six weeks, you'll see a shift towards fitness again. 
the weather has held me back here. And I know this is a prime example of you making excuses. Um, but ultimately, I recognize those issues. I recognize the fact that I don't like walking in, in, in this neighborhood. I liked walking where we were before, but that's a bit political at the moment because I actually want to move back up there. Um, but ultimately, it's about recognizing that you need to do some positive changes for your body. And if you can do that every day, like say, go for a walk, go for a swim, go and play golf, whatever. Even if it's like doing some gardening for an hour. Because it's not just about um, physical appearance or physical health. That says eating more healthy, um, your mental well-being, things like that are good. You know, gardening is good for that. Um, but you've got to recognize those things are going on. The last one is actually doing something for your body. I'd say body and mind. The, the reason I put this is it's not always about um, running running a mile. Sometimes it can be partnering around in the garden because you're disconnecting from stress and other stuff that's going on around you and simply just doing something that's completely relaxing and absorbing. Could be fishing, could be something where you're moving away from your day-to-day -day environment. The other side of this being is it could be the gym. And I do recognize that myself, I need to go back to the gym. And one of the things I, I've already told my wife is I'm just waiting for the next thing I'm about to do, which you'll know by the end of the week, um, what I'm up to. Um, but the point is, I can't do it until after that. And the reason being is I'd be grudge wasting money. So if I signed up to the gym, I would actually be unavailable to, to go. Um, but at the same time, I know that as soon as I start on the routine, I will suddenly excel you know at the end of the day i start doing it every single day i get into that routine the other thing you get once you get into that is you get that adrenaline push and you get the extra energy and the more positive feeling about yourself um how do i know it's like because once i get into it i'm, I'm away i love it uh, but it's just that with kids and everything else i've allowed things to get in my own way so i understand completely when people go it's a lot of effort. Yes, it is. But you know what? Once you drag yourself up and go and do it, you will feel so much better. You know, not for the first couple of weeks. You're going to feel aches, pains, out of breath, feel like you're dying, etc. But ultimately, that's your body saying, it's about time it woke up and started getting in better shape. Now, bear in mind, this is for you. You know, the <clears throat> getting healthy is for yourself. This is for you to feel good about yourself. A lot of people assume it's so that other people's project a, this image, you know, you should look like this. That gets back to number one. Don't get involved in the negative stuff. Doesn't matter. It's about yourself. It's about you feeling better with yourself. Even, you know, at the same time, as I've said, it's not always about going to the gym. It could be that you're going up the stairs and down the stairs at the office instead of taking the lift. That little bit of extra fitness does your body a world of good on a daily basis. It could be like myself, I have smoothies every day. It gives me a lot of green ingredients into my system that I wouldn't normally have. Um, it's, it's just health, bit of health consciousness. Um, but at the same time, I do recognize, I do put on a few pounds, especially over the winter. And I recognize a lot of it's because we eat out way too much compared to most other people out there. Um, but at the same time, I've recognized it. But one of the things I do also recognize is when I start going to the gym full, full blown, because one of the things I do also recognize between different people, I can't do things by half. I've got to go in full throttle, which is why once I get this thing out of the way, um, this week, I start to line up where I can go to the gym because then I'll be there every single day. Because I set a routine for that. Go in first thing in the morning, hit it, hit it, hit it every single day. Um, because I need to get the adrenaline pumping to keep me going and keep me getting in the right direction. I will put an image of me uh, before. Um, but like I've, said, I've mentioned this before, that many a, many an expat will tell you, you marrying a Filipino has put their weight on, and there's no, it's it's the cooking stuff. It's a lot of cooking, um, but 
See, the thing is, I, I don't even knock that. That's actually love for my wife. You know, at the end of the day, she loves cooking. I love eating. Um, but when I'm on my own working-wise, I often only have one meal a day. So, as, as we were joking with Peter the other day, he was on about um, people in the Philippines are more like hobbits because they have about 10 meals a day, you know. And in the Philippines, people have about six meals a day. They do. They have six smaller meals, which is the way you should be eating. But anyway, I'm going off on another tangent. Be aware that you can get yourself back into shape. There is no age limit on this. The, the, the point being is you will feel healthier. You will find you've got more energy. You'll find you gain more concentration from having a healthier body. Um, you'll also find that you'll feel more confident and happier. There is nothing wrong with somebody in their 50s, 60s suddenly hitting the gym. In fact, I recommend cardio, definitely. You may not want to go and pump up the iron, but regular cardio is very, very good for you. And it's the same as me. I go full throttle on cardio. When I go to the gym, I do not use the weights. Um, I use rowing machines and uh, rowing and running machines. That's all I do. I don't use the weights. My wife dreads me going back on the weights because this is why I'm quite broad anyway. I used to go to the gym when I was at school, you know, back when I was 15, every day. And I did gain quite a um, physique back then, which is why I've got very, even now, I've got very big forearms. But the point being is, you're going to get fit. You're not going to be, uh, you're not trying to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you get into it and want to do that, then I can advise you to talk to Nick. Nick, Nick actually does bodybuilding. Um, but the, the point being is, you're going there for confidence. You're going there to feel healthier and be healthier. That's what you want to focus on. And there is nothing wrong with coming out the other side much leaner, happier, confident, and healthier. Now, thanks for watching. If you do like videos, please like, please subscribe, please share, and please feel free to comment.